tell you something, brother. I think the antagonist movement is a bunch of crap. I don't think nothing of it. I think they're highly irritated people that have their noses too far up Yo, their what backsides. What are you talking about, man? Oh, it's right, come bitch. Come on. Come on. Come you want some more of this movement? Come on. Uh, this is Pat Conlon, and the antagonist movement is fucking nonsense. Creativity is the enemy. The antagonist movement is an amazing group of people. They're all talented. They're all doing what they can to try and bring something to the public. And more of you need to come down here and listen and hopefully get up and write. Last name is Siegel, S-I-E-G-E-L. Spanky Van Dyke, S-P-A-N-K-Y-V-A-N-D-Y-K-E. S-L-G-O-S-E-U-L-G-I-O-H. William Conn, C-O-N-N-E-L-L. -L. Nicola Tellerico. Seth Abrams, and that is S-E-T-H-A-B-R-A-M-S, a.k.a. The Goon. Uh, my name is Gabriel C.D. Spell it! It's G-A-B-R-I-E-L-C-D. My name is Tim Ellis, T-I-M-O-E-L-L-I-S. So, uh, you're now a member of the Antagonist Movement. Oh, no. Tell us, uh, how you came to know these guys and how you got involved in the Antagonist Movement. Tell us about your artwork today! My artwork today at the show, you mean? Yes! Uh, it's a new series that I'm working on, mainly with digital pictures. Uh, something really different from what I've been doing this year. It's mainly images that are totally stolen. They're not mine. It's just an image that I pick on the web. Okay, and um, tell us about the theme of the show tonight and what you did for that theme. I believe the theme was called Genesis. God created earth or something in seven days and what can you do and uh, I didn't take seven days I took about three hours but from there I learned everything and I learned they inspired me to be creative we kept playing the music they taught us art I made some panties <laughs> with Slayer studded on it and I totally ripped off Alice Cooper schools out and I put the panties around a piece of vinyl we all had to create something within the seven days from last Thursday to tonight so had to be all new artwork so I came home very drunk one night last week and uh, thought of these words it was crazy I didn't know if it was a dream or whatever I wasn't drinking or smoking that night but I was tired you know when you're tired you think you're high and later on I heard people describing this guy walk around in the, in the hoods it's like she's wearing some sort of weird mask but anyways yeah so it's about a faceless girl and that's the guy in the referring to the name was Ray Ray. My artwork tonight is actually not for sale because it's a gift from my friend Vincent Gallo for all the wonderful things he's done for me. He didn't ask if it was for sale. Yeah, I know, but that's basically all there is about it. It's a painting, you know. Uh, it's based on that song Honey Bunny, except for um, it's also based on that Japanese mechanical bunny that plays the drums. It's actually based on that first. Play the song. I said, these are the guys that kidnapped me and my band. From then on, it was mutual love.
I was just messing around actually with uh, my toys, my, my, my tapes. I didn't really, I didn't plan it really at all. I mean, I, I gathered some stuff and like, it was just for fun. This is the challenge, I guess, is to see if you can make it into something. Right. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, it was a kind, it was, a, it was all the sh shit I like. Whatever the hell that is. <laughs> all right, coming up next, another guy I don't know from nowhere. Mr. Jeff Chrysler, where the hell are you? Jeff Ray. How you doing, man? You're looking at my shoes, you okay? You seem lost. You're like, how did I end up in a human body? Uh, <laughs> Shut the fuck up, 30 seconds. I'll wrestle you in the parking lot, bitch. There we go. You got me, right, sweetheart? Uh -huh. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I was talking to a friend of mine recently. He's a big chauvinist guy. And I said, hey, friend of mine, are you serious about the girl you're with? Like, nah, we're just fuck buddies. I'm Zeke Terwilliger and your mother came to my house last night. First of all, if you don't know me, I have a real bone to pick with Wayne Newton, that glittery, bloated faggot. I will fuck him up any night of the week. He intimidates comedians like Johnny Carson, and I'm sick of it. Went to see the vagina monocles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, I'm not shitting you. Do not go to see this play if you're a guy. Because it's not one talking vagina in the whole fucking thing. <laughs> you know, I figure you go and there's a little, hey, I'm Virginia Vagina. Thanks for coming. You know, but all there are of is a bunch of babbling grunts up there telling how much they hate men. Yeah, fuck buddy, exactly. You guys heard this term? Fuck buddy? You guys aren't really laughing, you might be a couple. Anyway, look. <laughs> fuck buddy, I personally found it kind of offensive, but then it was rattling around in my head, fuck buddy, fuck buddy. It sounds like a demented children's doll. <laughs> from Mattel. You wanna, are you talking? Come up here and take the mic from me if you think you got balls. <laughs> For the kids afraid of commitment. <laughs> it's fuck buddy. <laughs> With dual arm action. <laughs> Pleasure. With only one string attached. <laughs> so I'll see you when I see ya. <laughs> Sex. Without those messy emotions. <laughs> it is 18 to 40. All right, first of all, first of all, I'm gonna do a little tribute to my friend Jam Master J. Shut up! Three years ago, a friend of mine asked me to write some MC rhymes. Woo! And yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, a white cracker. I don't know the rest of your fucking lyrics. All right. all right, now that you're listening, can I uh, talk a little about the man that's running our country? Yeah. I can talk about Dick Cheney. That's cool. Bush, bush, bush. Thanks, sir. Is your first night drinking? Is that... <laughs> bush, bush, bush. We eat it, we drink it, we even made it president. All right, fuck that. Number three, don't name your dog Fluffy or Donut. Give your dog a proper name like Stanley or Cornelius. Don't think that if you live in the city, you can name your dog Lamppost, Subway, or Taxi unless you want me to fuck you up to the 50th floor. <laughs> Don't get piercings or tattoos if you think you're going to look tough or cool. Get po Botox injections in your eyebrows, just like the Hulk, so people know that you won't, they won't like you when you get angry. <laughs> and finally, no, actually, I got four and a half. Don't be a goddamn racist. You think just because I look like a fucking cracker myself, let me give you exemplary gratis. When I was growing up, our next door neighbor was Mrs. Butterworth. Yeah, Mr. Butterworth ran off with Aunt Jemima, but we didn't give a shit. You know, and even though their son went by the gang tag Silver Dollar, I never gave her, I never gave him a hard time when he told me that how good it felt to stick his long knife in between two hot creamy flapjacks. <laughs> Yo, and by the way, when I retire, I'm gonna start my own clothing line to rival these fucking asshole companies like DKNY and FCUK. What is that, a dyslexic motherfucker or something? FCUK? My clothing line is gonna have social consciousness. It's gonna be called DLMPH. Don't lick my fucking pee hole. Everywhere you look like the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. What a great combination. <laughs> How long till we get the Bureau of Marijuana, Pornography, and Squandering Opportunities? <laughs>
I think we could all work for them. <laughs> Sit around eating Doritos, watching the Playboy channel. <laughs> Scramble, but I think that's a titty. <laughs> When I, <laughs> when I wrote that uh, fabulous joke, uh, my roommate at the time walks in, she's like, what are you doing? What goes with marijuana and pornography? You mean, what type of wine? <laughs> Turns out it's Pinot, thanks for laughing. <laughs> and finally, don't anyone think they can take my fucking scumbag? If you try it, you will see the consequences. That's it. I, I, I'm available for, I'm av all right, hold on. I'm available for wrestling in the parking lot. If anyone thinks they can take me, I'll meet you right outside right now. Fuck you. <laughs> and I've done comedy long enough around the country to know what's the first thing comes to mind when you hear someone's from San Francisco? Gay. Exactly, democratic. <laughs> One minute. Oh, it's gay, thank you. God for killing me. I, it's not gay, you know, it, it, gay is a stereotype that comes on, it comes up in the weirdest ways. This show in Oregon, this guy's like, oh, San Francisco, I heard of those raves down there. They come up to you with a needle full of AIDS. Yes. And they stick it in your leg. And then they give you a business card that says, welcome to the world of AIDS. <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of shitty party would that be? <laughs> oh man, that Ebola virus you gave me is all speedy. <laughs> Me and Jose were smoking a big bowl of leprosy. <laughs> and we got the munchies and we ate ourselves. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the concept is, uh, um, you know, because a lot of people, their art, and, and rightfully so, is expensive. Like People like, you know, the average person like you and me can't afford it. So we came up with this show to have good art but at affordable prices so that people who are into art can buy it. You know, like, you can see something like it and actually be able to afford it and take it home. And then, uh, you know, it's encouraging all of us to, to start collections or trade our stuff or just get everybody's art out there. Where's, Where's Dan? Dan? Where's Dan? Where's Dan? Where's Dan? Where's Dan? Who the fuck is Dan? The concept of the Price to Go show actually is creation was the original idea. We've got great artists in the city. We've got people who do amazing things, but they're often high priced. So what we want to do is take creation and give it to the masses. So we've got a fantastic artist, say like Colin Burns, who sold a piece here for $800. He's doing cheap prints for $10. And it's fine artwork for cheap. So you can add them to your own collection. Another thing we want to do is think about the consumer, the consumer that's out there, you know, kind of buying everything for nothing. Just They just buy into everything, every kind of ad campaign. So we're trying to just mass produce and sell. Like the rest of the world, but in our own little antagonistic twist. Over here on this wall are prints by Arturo Vega, $15 a piece. Most of them, well, ha about half of them are already sold and we haven't even opened the gallery yet. John Vance. John Vance said this piece is entitled David Alexis Has a Future. Looks like it's a happy one. Okay. We got some work here by, Dave, by Conlon, Pat Conlon. Gabriel Couture Dumont did the pieces above. This one in Red Hook. It's not? Oh, I thought you said those two were on the wall. Maybe. Finally. No. No. Go on. This is genius. That is the fucking the top of a Grey Goose bottle and bar straws. That was originally in the flagship. I might have to I might have to steal this one. Or what about the bayonet? Or I might have to buy it too. Go in here. That's Ethan's birthday gift. Uh, wow. Say no to drugs. The first piece that's out here is a piece of street art. It's gonna be five dollars. If you feel bad about yourself, about your artwork, buy this piece because we found it in the trash can. Yes, in the trash can we found this piece. Look at it, it's a beautiful piece of art. Could be a famous artist. Come on, five dollars. Is anyone a bit for five dollars? Five dollars. Alright, we're going down to one dollar. One dollar. The opposite way for We got one dollar to the pedophile in the corner. Brian the pedophile in the corner. Everyone else, one dollar. One dollar. Two dollars. Go. Three dollars. We got three dollars going once. Oh, five dollars at the bar, Brian. We got a competitive man. What do you want? What do you want? Five dollars going once. Going twice. So for five dollars. Take your right now. Pay me later. The artwork was done by David Wallen. 
um, some stuff he put together for the show. That's He's really good. down with trading or selling or whatever else needs to be done. He's going to have pieces in the auction tonight, too. <laughs> Not this one? No. That one's... I want that one. How much is that? We would know if we put all the prices up. Let's go. This is Johnny T's piece. He's late as usual. Probably won't get here till 15 minutes after the show starts. That's why underneath Johnny T's name is still blank. But that's going to be a deck of cards. Johnny T is the one antagonist that's antagonizing all the other antagonists. Say that ten times fast. Because Johnny T is the one antagonist. He, he won't the other bring his artwork on time ever. Maybe this is Dan. Label the wall. Gonna help him go through the rest. Of that's uh, Orpheus. Orpheus. Orpheus Korshak. He has that and a couple other pieces in the show. He's a photographer that just came with one of his friends. But since it's price to go, we took his work and we put it on the wall. Ooh, all right, we got another piece coming out. Distortion. He's a man who can write faster than you can read. We're starting for one dollar. Don't bid over five because we're on sale in the back room for five dollars. So, who wants a fantastic book? Comes in a CD case. You can always put a CD in there with the book. If you don't like the book, you can throw it away. So, go at once. Distortion. One dollar. Who's got a dollar? One dollar in the corner to Jenny. Jenny, she's got fantastic boxes in the back room. They're not bid, but they're up for sale. One dollar. We got two dollars anyway. Brian, two dollars. Push the bid. You already own it. Fantastic. Did you like it, Brian? I love it. He loves it. See? Brother Fuka's a writer. He's a good writer. He's a night on Sunday nights. We got two dollars anywhere. One dollar going to Jenny. One dollar. Going once, going twice, sold for one dollar. My pieces? Mm -hmm. Well, basically it's called Fuck You because people piss me off and I like to say fuck you. So, I redid liquor label bottles and cigarette labels and condoms and all this stuff. Replacing it with fuck you, Brian, and other things that have to do with me. And then I took like traditional tattoo stuff and drew them digitally and put fuck you on those too. <laughs> so basically, fuck you. <laughs> Pat Conlon, and this is my artwork with my name spelled wrong. Now it's spelled right. Um, this is a case study about producing things in a modern day society. If you want something done good, it's going to be expensive, but you're not going to get it fast. Or if you want it good or fast, it's going to be expensive. You have to pick two out of the three, and you get the, the gist of basically what this is all about. It's a quick little pro quo to get, like, to figure out what your end product will be. Um, something that's just kind of evolved out of um, tumultuous times that we've had lately and it's, and it's basically do what you want to do no matter what it is as long as it makes you feel good you know even if it's a little bit dirty it's good no i don't like the idea of being on camera <laughs> you can't beat that shit this piece is called more ass more ass. You should buy it for the fucking title. If More ass. Else. Buy it for the fucking title, like the man says. Going for five fucking dollars. Five Come on dollars. now. Support your local artist and the antagonist movement. Five dollars. The man with the handlebar. Come on now. I saw you raise your hand. You're lucky you don't have a plate with a number on it. All right. Five dollars. Anyone? I know these three are, are Mike Lee. The only one that's not um, an animal of mine is the the cat with the on. It's a, it was, it's a dead cat, and I got it from the vet. So you just go in and you ask, you know, do you have any dead animals? And they usually they usually will give it to you at a pet shop too. Um, the, we have these birds that I won in an Uno game. I won so many wonderful things in Uno game, but the best thing is a jar with two dead birds I think the filled with formaldehyde. Good. Yeah, but those were mine originally. I was just winning them back. Oh. Is it upside down? Who's got five dollars? We got Brian with five dollars. Five dollars there, there. boy. The Anyone else? Five dollars to the pedophile. And there's no yeah. children in the picture. It must be good. We got six dollars. We got seven seventy-five. Oh, that's like seven dollars in a pack of gum. Brian, can you beat that? Anyone else? Seven seventy-five. It's going once. Seven ninety-nine. It's the price. Seven ninety-nine. It's the price to go. Seven ninety-nine. Can you go seven? Can you beat it with eight dollars? That's only one more penny. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Going once. You got nine dollars, Brian. You got nine dollars. Eight dollars. Going once. Eight fifty. Oh my God, it's going through the roof for this price to go show. Eight fifty. Eight fifty. Too rich for anyone's blood. We got eight fifty. How about nine dollars? Eight fifty-one. It's only one more penny. Eight dollars! 
Oh, it's Steve, ten dollars, ten dollars, Brian. We know it's so rich for your blood. I know you owe me money, Brian. Ten dollars, ten dollars, going once, anyone? Ten dollars, going twice, and eleven dollars, eleven dollars, ten dollars, going twice, but so ten dollars. Ten dollars, you can pay me now, pay me later. Ten dollars, so let me write that down. Things that I'm showing? Yeah. It's unfinished art. What? I'm really disturbed by this really, really hot girl there. Should we move somewhere else? Uh, no, it's cool. The heat girls are sensational. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, to get laid by girls, remember that. Mr. T, you, you can't take any drugs, it's not good for you. Uh, where'd, where'd you get the idea from? Uh, it's a long story, I went to a friend's place uh, and he gave me a shitload of uh, magazines from the 80s and I started making all these, uh, actually it was all people people's magazines, so it was all these uh, famous stars from the 80s that kind of bring all memories back so I started making drawings and portraits of all these guys so this is like a lost piece in the whole series because I usually work with Thermofax print and that was a painting which wasn't fitting very much what really struck me not so long ago is all these people that 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 um, finally made something something really like this this cat there that would and the other guy there <clears throat> the other Mookie is uh, a revelation for for everybody because they just started making something uh, creatively speaking and it turned out to be like fucking genius these guys are I don't know they're they're pulling some shit that it just every time I see a new piece it's it's striking me and they're not an exception I mean there's so many people that just bring some stuff for the theme show and uh, strikes everybody with their personal IDs and shit like that, and they would have never done it if, if uh, without the antagonist, you know. Oh, this is an original. Pet. This is the hot shit. This is the hot shit. Show the back first. Show the back. Hey, show the back. Are we starting this shit? It's like a cabinet's key. Thirty dollars. We're starting this at thirty dollars. What it has done for me is basically give me like. Like a little podium, you know, in the uh, in, in a city which is not my my city, my hometown. I didn't know a lot, knew a lot of people back then. Uh, got something out from the from the uh, this this art forum that the Ignite series are. Is thirty dollars. Anyone in the crowd? Thirty dollars. We have thirty. We got thirty with Elska. Elska, we got thirty with Elska. Nobody bit her because she's my girlfriend. If you have bit her, I'd beat you up. Anybody? Thirty dollars going once. Thirty dollars. How about thirty-five? Thirty-five. Anyone? Thirty-five. Who's got thirty? Look at Who's got thirty-five? But how does it feel? Good. Hip hip boo on the man in the crowd. All right, we got thirty dollars going once. We got we got thirty-five with the man behind about thirty-five. We got hip boo. Um, my involvement within the antagonist it was yeah it was um it's not something i really signed up for and i don't think it works like that for anybody it's something you do you know the more time you give to the whole movement the more involved you get in uh, personally i mean on a, on a personal level it's it's totally interest free because you're you're not doing something only for yourself you're doing something for the community first and then it kind of comes back uh she just looked at me Bid. Anyone going 41? 41 anywhere. 30, no, 41, that's more. 41, 41, 40 dollars, going once, going twice, sold to Elska! <laughs> trying to do something, which is, uh, which is really healthy, I think. Where do you go from here? I'm uh, thinking about going to, uh, moving to Mexico for a while, for uh, a couple of months probably until next June and then um, basically doing the same thing that, I'm, that I'll be that, that I have been doing here which is meeting people and uh, continuing making art trying to find like opportunities of showing it a little that's that's what makes me happy and probably <clears throat> uh, try to uh, be uh, an ambassador of the antagonist movement back uh, down in Mexico. 
try to uh, pull some people together and then open a little antagonist uh, sugar cell. Conci conciliary? Uh, conciliary it is, I guess. I, uh, makes me think that I'm in some Mafusi organization. The conciliary. But that, I guess that's what I am. Because I, I, I'm always bitching about everything. Nothing works here. I'm telling you, you guys are just a bunch of fucking losers. Lunatic losers. Hello. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm only here in the antagonist movement to get laid. Well, we have to make sure that uh, the all the artists' uh, work gets put back together in one bag with their name labeled properly because it'll be a pain in the ass if someone is missing a piece of art. And, and that there's no vomit on the piece. Yeah. Like this shit never happened. All right, erase that. Erase that. This one is the night vision one. <laughs> Show me here. That's the night vision one. That flashlight actually works. Well, See, what are these? So you can aim at your target. What are these? They're blow guns. They're dark guns, but you know. All right, so that's that one. And you got the fucking thing you can look through. This one has a safety valve. See, so you can't shoot when it's like that for if you keep it around your kids. <laughs> that one's childproof. Don't, hey, they'll, never, they'll never figure that out. That's the safety. You let that up and then you can use it. And then, you know, that's the gauge to look through right there. All plastic, so you can get it through airport security. <laughs> and you'll notice that these are, uh, these are the things you use for your garden hose. That simple PVC pipe, that is too. That's a pour from a liquor bottle at black and white. And then when you look through there, I don't know if you can see it through there, but it lines up perfectly for you. Hey, Dan, go over there so I can aim it. Just as a side note, most of these newspapers are taken from the day that John Gotti died. Because he needed a newspaper and it was the only one I had in my room. Connections? Absolutely not. Damn it! Intagavision! <laughs> <laughs>